Hello dentist, how are you today? Today we're going to talk about uh, how to manage a patient with gingival recession. Before we start our topic today, I want you to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell for more videos. So let's start now. How would you manage a patient with gingival recession? The first thing you should do is take a good thorough case history. Present concerns, sensitivity. History of presenting complaint. Dental history tooth brushing history, frequency and duration, any previous orthodontic treatment, clinical examination, very good clinical examination, includes assessment of the presence of plaque, recession, probing depth, bleeding, amount of attached gingiva, presence of functional gingiva, tooth mobility, vitality, te vitality testing, occlusion, oral hygiene techniques, and instructions so this is uh, what you should do first uh, if you want to manage a patient with gingival recession what should you do if the recession is mild on all except the lower left lateral incisor so we have to target uh, traumatic tooth brushing improve plaque control monitor the progression with measurements, photographic, treat sensitivity, take impression for study models. So this is what you should do if the recession is mild on all except lower left lateral incisor. So now we're going to talk about the causes of gingival recession. Causes of gingival recession, why does it happen? because of the traumatic tooth brushing. So patients using this brush in a, in a way that it may uh, hurt, uh, affect the gingiva, okay? Will, and this will affect the gingiva and this will lead to recession of the gingiva. Okay, so, so the first thing is traumatic tooth brushing. Incorrect tooth brushing technique. He's not put using the right technique. He's not putting the brush in at 45 degrees uh, to the axis uh, on the uh, to the axis of the tooth okay he is using abrasive toothpaste so inside the toothpaste there are abrasives which may affect the gingiva okay and lead to gingival recession traumatic occlusion inside the relationship uh, tooth out of arch if, if the tooth is out of arch this will lead to gingival recession orthodontic movement of the tooth labially if the tooth is moved labially and uh, here uh, finally uh, the habits such as rubbing of the gingiva with fingernails or pen so if you some kids they use their uh, pens in their mouth okay and this will lead to gingival recession or or even using their fingernails so these things should be avoided okay This is how gingival recession looks like. This is a normal tooth, can you see? The where, uh, here is the gingiva is well uh, uh, attached to the tooth and it's covering the root. While here you can see the root, okay? Uh, and this we call it gingival, this is we call gingival recession, okay? Here the root is exposed, okay? And this will lead to sensitivity of the tooth. This will lead to sensitivity of the tooth. If the patient uh, drinks hot or cold, he will feel he will feel the pain. Okay. And this it's better to be um, treated. Okay, to reduce this pain. And we're going to see how it's done. Okay. So uh, what are we going to do here? Finally, how are we going to uh, reduce this pain? Uh, where is the free gingiva open taken from? Okay, the first thing, uh, the lateral pedicle, okay? So from the gingival, uh, we make a mucogingival surgery to correct the recession. So we're going to make mucogingival surgery to correct the recession. The first type, uh, by a lateral pedicle, uh, lateral pedicle graft, okay? This is called lateral pedicle graft. And here we have the second type is double papilla papillae flap okay this is another 
picture of double papillae flap. Can you see here? This is the recession. So, and this is here, this is the flap. Okay. And then here we make the stitches. And can you see? We have covered all this uh, recession. Okay. By the double papillae flap procedure. Okay. And after a few uh, weeks, this is how it looks like. Can you see the difference from here to, to there? Can you see? There's a big difference. Another type is coronally repositioned flap. These can be sewn by interpositioned grafts, okay? This is called coronally, coronally repositioned flap, okay? This is how it looks like. Free gingival graft to provide wider and functionally functional zone of attached gingiva. Okay, can you see here also? Here we have recession of the gingiva. Okay, and this is the flap done. And then we have that make the graft. Okay, and this is the this is after few weeks. It looks perfect. There you can see the difference here, and we can make the we use the uh, probe uh, to uh, to check the difference. Can you see the difference? There's a big difference. Okay, I hope uh, today's topic was of interest to you and uh, uh, it's, I'm sure it's important, especially uh, uh, to uh, youth coming to the clinic uh, having a gingival recession. So now we know what are we going to do if a patient comes to the clinic and, ha and he has gingival recession, okay? Uh, thanks for listening today and I hope uh, uh, you enjoyed today's topic. Thanks for listening and goodbye for now. Bye.